Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Uh, welcome to Trading View. Welcome to my Patreon subscribers. Welcome to YouTube. Welcome to everybody. Okay. Uh, again, summer, midsummer, boring, kind of, eh. <laughs> not really uh, doing much. Although the markets have been going up, right? Kind of grinding a little bit higher. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a li little bit about cryptos and. Um, We'll talk a little bit about macroeconomics. All right. Uh, last was week, about 10 days ago, uh, I was not convinced about this move in Amazon. Okay. It kind of broke out. Yeah. Uh, you could say many things about this chart, but I just wasn't convinced. Okay. And, and I showed it that, you know, look, look for something similar to this. Now, somebody mentioned correctly. Um, that this was COVID. Yeah, correct. This is COVID. But the chart set up pattern, the way it broke out, the way it's behaving is, you know, and it's not just this one chart. Remember, it's not just this. You have to look at all the data. Let the message of the market tell you what's going on. Don't tell the message of the market what is going on. There's a big difference in that. Okay. Um, so, even though, yeah, he was correct, but the chart pattern, the way it broke out, I didn't like. Okay. And sure enough, since then, it it popped. All right. It popped it pulled back. Right. That's the thing about key areas. Right. They can go either way. Um, but you also want to read the message of the market. Now, if it were to start to bounce from here, this is what I would call a break test go. Right. It breaks out, it comes back, it tests it, and then goes. All right. Uh, if it were to start to turn around here and start to hook back up, and I see the rest of the message of the market is positive, then, yeah, okay, I'm with you. Let's go. Let's take this baby long. But um, as you can see, I, I didn't like it, and it did turn out to be correct. Okay, it doesn't mean I'm always right. I don't have a crystal ball. I <laughs> Nobody does. Anybody that does tell you that they do, they're lying, right? Uh, so just be aware of this kind of breakout, all right? Look at the message of the market. All right, uh, Tesla. Let's go a little bit further back again. We'll talk about Tesla. You had a nice little bullish setup here, okay? You get the nice thrust up move. You get that bullish uh, at resistance, that consolidation where it's coiling up and coiling up and coiling up. And then usually you'll get a breakout. It didn't happen. Okay. And I said, well, unless it breaks this area, if it starts to, you know, fall apart and then it starts to break, well, obviously <laughs> you can take this one short. It's, it's simple. Um, so what happened since? Bunch of noise. <laughs> That's all that happened. Noise, nothing. <laughs> so, you know, if it doesn't break out, you can't take it long. If it doesn't break down, you can't take it short. So what do you do with it? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Okay. If anything, we can say, look, it's a double, uh, double top M pattern at resistance. And now we can say the likely uh, bias is to the downside. They had plenty of opportunities to break out and didn't. Now you're starting to see the market starting to slowly kind of roll over. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. All right. So kind of. You know, learn the chart patterns is what I'm trying to tell you. Learn what you're looking at. Look at it. Study it because it happens uh, repetitively. Okay. Uh, if you didn't see this uh, video here, okay, how real world macroeconomics works it's in 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes, actually. Uh, I think it's going to be helpful, at least for you to understand how I view uh, the markets and the economics and so forth. Uh, we talked about Amazon. All right, game. Again, I emphasize, right? I always get these bots that come running in. Thankfully, the bots are starting to go away, and we can actually do the analysis properly without having to to expose them. All right, so you see this thrust up move. This is a short covering for sure. This is people piling in. This is excitement. This is uh, definitely a wow moment. Right. So you can run with that. The second one was not quite the same. 
for a reason because people were not as excited okay uh you had the big drop then you had the big pop these this is what is called the dead cat bounce right this is when everybody that that missed out this one says i'm going to get this one and it's going to go off to the moon right it goes up and then dies remember if they don't scare you out they're going to wear you out okay the, these things are written in blood so remember these little sayings the next move up was very muted okay very muted you didn't have the same enthusiasm as you did here or here so it's like uh uh be careful be careful and that's when i i made the post right in here i don't know if i can like you know uh, maybe i can yeah it won't let me anyway it doesn't matter just uh, if you can click on this little triangles here they will show you all the calls that i made when i made them and sure enough it did break the uptrend and start to fade away now this looks kind of small right this this whole thing looks kind of small it's not it's 55 it's 45 percent from top to bottom it's 55 percent it's a 55 percent drop from zero okay no matter how high a price goes you're always 100 percent from zero so if you lose 55 percent of that do you know how many hundred percent up that is it's a lot Okay, that's a lot. So uh, a lot of people don't understand percentages. They, they, they really don't. And it's, uh, it's kind of scary, actually. All right, so here's the one where I posted it. This was back on June 3rd. Right? Very unpopular for me to do so back then, believe me. Boom, there you go. Right, magic. Magic. Uh, and again, this is my little diary. So uh, what about game, right? February 2nd, I said, look, double top, you know, kaboom. There you go, 90% on this one, right? Went up, again, kaboom, back down. All right, it's all, it's all, you know, here on Trading View, you guys can go view it. Uh, you know, the wounds of honor are always self-inflicted, right? So <laughs> I don't want to say something that's not true. You go back, you test, not test, but... You look at my little diary, if I said something wrong, then I'm going to be the first one to admit it. All right, take two interactive. You know, this one is an interesting chart, right? First of all, the market was going up. So you never really want to short <laughs> when the market is up. But the chart was so compelling. You got a head and shoulders going. You got a rising wedge-ish, wedge-ish kind of formation. And it's breaking down. Well... You know, you got to kind of take the risk once in a while, I guess. Uh, it comes back into structure, for example. You know, it does one of these, comes back in here. Well, then you can do something like this and blow up in your face. So you don't want to really hold this one uh, much above going back into structure. And since then, it popped, it dropped, and then it ended up pretty much flat. Again, now that the market might be rolling over just a little bit, uh we might get that next move down all right and it's uh it's quite big if it does happen mmt never saw inflation coming it's true they never saw it coming yet when you go back and 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 you read some of this stuff that and i and i love this feature on trading view by the way it's fantastic because you can kind of show people that you know, a lot of people with large followings and blah, 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 they're not really, you know, oh, I'm an economist, I'm a PhD, and God forbid you, you pay anybody to go uh, get an education from Stephanie Kelton, <laughs> a professor of PhD that has no idea about macroeconomics, right? She's clueless. Uh, this particular tweet, I think, was, yeah, back on September 17th, and it says, how are you going to pay for it, right? That, that's their big model. How are you going to pay? Don't worry about how you're going to pay for it. Don't worry how you're going to pay for it. Well, what do you mean don't worry about it? <laughs> I am worried about it. Well, no, no, don't worry about it. Worry about how you're going to spend it, okay? These people love deficits. And they'll tell you that, oh, wait, inflation is the limit, okay? Uh, inflation. The only limit really is inflation. This was back on 
November 12th, 2019. Okay, all right, fair enough. Inflation is the limit. Did she see this coming? Nope, and it hasn't even registered. It's still showing five on uh, trading view, by the way. All right, it's all the way up here. 5.4. Did she see inflation coming? Nope. It's here. Everybody can see it. I mean, even, uh, I don't know, uh, an, an old lady can tell you there's inflation. Do you see them running around saying, hey, there's inflation, you know, we reached the limit, you know, let's come back on spending, on deficits? Nope. Nothing. Here you have Warren Mosley saying, no, the Fed knows uh, uh, raising, uh, let me get this off, uh, rate hikes cause inflation. Rate hikes cause inflation? Wow. Okay. So what is this? <laughs> they would raise rates and I don't know about it? Because quantitative easing is at all-time highs, right? $120 billion a month. Interest rates are at zero. So what's causing inflation? Interest rates, right? And again, this guy, he's supposed to be the father of MMT, blah, blah, blah. No idea. He never saw inflation coming, nor does he acknowledge it while it's here. Now, let me remind you, okay, that the CPI is not really reflecting reality. We have rents up 10%. We have housing up 25, 24. Let me correct that. 23.9, but 24%. We have used cars up 45%. That's not inflation. And I mean, the list can go on. Okay. You think these prices are going to go down next year? You think Coca-Cola is going to lower price? Kimberly Clark? Smuckers? <laughs> I mean, do you think these prices, they're not coming down. It's not coming down. So what did $6 trillion in a little over a year plus $3 trillion in uh, tax revenues that were spent get us? It got us inflation. It, it means that our kids are going to have to pay 10% more for rent in one year alone, 24% more for a home, and 45% more for a used car. That's what deficits got us. All right. So, you know, don't listen to these people blindly, okay? All right, uh, the war machine, all right? General Dynamics, nice little bullish flag. Look for more upside, okay? It's starting to move in that direction. Hasn't broken out yet. AMC, we talked about this one, down 55%. Uh, I did take uh, half profits on this one already. Uh, just kind of disclosure there. Okay, nice little move to the downside, as expected. You know, again, if they don't scare you out, they'll wear you out. Uh, so now they they wore you out and probably scare some people out, and that's why it resolved uh, in, in the manner that it did. All right, so uh, where are we? Where are we? We're in euphoria land, okay? We're in euphoria land. Now, remember, last time at 3.4% unemployment, we were here and then COVID hit. But remember, in February of 2020, prior to COVID being an issue, the U.S. entered into a recession. You can look it up, right? Uh, that it became a severe recession because of COVID is a different story. But that's when we entered a recession. Since then, during a recession, okay, you have gone into a particle market. What's a particle market? It's a market that moves in one direction. That's it. There's no lower lows. It's just one direction, straight up, nonstop. Now, you're going to get a lot of guys who are, quote, unquote, experts telling you, oh, no, well, quantitative easing, uh, excessive deficits. No, no, they don't cause asset price inflation. Oh, I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> you, have, you have lockdowns. You have people, high unemployment, excessive deficits, excessive QE. Zero interest rate policy, endless lending facilities from the Fed. And what, what happened? The market went straight up. Oh, it's a forward-looking indicator. Bullshit. The market cannot be a forward-looking indicator when it is manipulated. When it's not manipulated, different story. Different story. Okay? But be careful of people that tell you that this is not caused by asset price inflation, by excessive deficit, zero interest rate policy, and quantitative easing, okay? 
Now let's talk about reverse repos. Right? Everybody's like, well, QE is not a big deal. You're just exchanging a bond for a reserve. Uh-uh. Wrong. When you look at um, total reserves in the banking system, okay, there are about almost four trillion dollars. We have about eight plus, okay, eight trillion dollars of QE. So where's the other four? We're missing four trillion dollars, my friends. <laughs> so for all those experts that are telling you, oh no, it's just an asset swap from bonds to reserves. Okay, well, I should see $8 trillion in the bank reserves. It's not there. Huh. Well, shit, what happened? Somebody must have, <laughs> must have took it, right? Yeah. Well, people can withdraw with, with reserves and go uh, allocate that cash somewhere else. Okay? Or they can go buy bonds. So that brings us back to this. Reverse repos. Oh, reverse repos. Oh, that's because the banks have just so much reserves that they, they needed bonds and they went out and they reverse repoed. No. <laughs> no. Why? Well, let's take a look. When you look at the uh, reverse repo operation, almost a trillion. It's about $800 billion now, whatever it is. Okay, It's kind of stabilized here. Far in excess of, of what it was before. Okay. You should have seen, according to their logic, okay, that uh, the banks just needed more bonds. By that logic, then uh, reserves should have drained by about a trillion. They didn't. Huh. Why not? Why didn't that happen? Because they're wrong. Okay. There's a reason for it, but I'm not going to talk about it now. Uh, that's more for my subscribers, but think about these things that a lot of people are just pushing around on social media as if they know what they're talking about and kind of mislead you. Finally, I want, I want to get to the real domestic, uh, gross domestic GDP. Okay. Productive, the real one inflation adjusted, and we're still, we still haven't, uh, exceeded it. We will at some point. Okay. We still have not exceeded it. But I want you to think about the amount of deficits that were spent. It's almost $6 trillion in over a year, a little, little over a year. $3 trillion in tax revenues that were spent back into the economy for a total of $9 trillion. Prior to the pandemic, real GDP was $19.2 trillion. So we are a little bit less than 50% of GDP we spent the government spent into existence or recycled or whatever. It spent it. And what did we get for it? No GDP growth. Okay. So when you hear that, oh, we're going to stimulate for the people, nonsense. Nonsense. It's not true. It does not add to the pie. You're simply adding slices to a pie, expecting that the pizza pie is going to get bigger. It doesn't. It doesn't. The economy will recover when the economy recovers, when it's ready to. Okay. Is there, is there, is there another way to explain it? Yeah. If you add more numbers, more digits to a yardstick, it's still a yardstick. Okay. Remember, government cannot create value for a currency, so it cannot make the pie bigger. All right. It's just digits. And those digits flow into the savings bubble, as I call it. And people run out and they speculate. And when they speculate, guess what happens? Right? Asset prices rise. Okay? Asset, and that's why you see commodities going straight up. And inflation will stay as long as commodities remain high. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, guys. So have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your support. You guys are awesome. Take care. Keep it simple. Ask the basic questions. Make sure you get a good answer for it. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.